You are a grandparent. I am a grandparent, yes. How many exactly. grandkids do you have? Um, four. And I know they go from two, I think, up to in the teens, the early teens. Yeah, um, two to about 14. Wow. Yeah, wow. yeah. About. They're great entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> They're never very good on giving you information themselves. Yeah, yeah you, you have know? to drag it How up. How old are you? Oh, Grandpa. Yeah. Yeah. Shut up. And do they know what <laughs> Grandpa does? Do they know you for yeah. your travel work? Are they from Monty Python? Do they like that stuff? Not particularly. <laughs> no, they're quite embarrassed by it all. No, I mean, when our children are growing up, they, they, they find their own entertainment. Um, but my, one, of my, one of my grandsons is very interested in how much I'm worth. You know, there's this very, very strange website that says net worth. And he keeps Googling it almost every day. He, said, he, he, he said, wants to see if you're going up or down. Yeah. yeah. yeah said, Don't let him make you tea. Yeah. No. He said... <laughs> he said to my oldest son, who's his father, um, he said one particular day, you know, he's worth this much. I think perhaps we could sell him on the website. <laughs> <laughs> it was just brilliant. <laughs> no, yeah. um, Michael, I'm pleased to say, despite lockdown, he's managed to produce a new TV show for us. It's called Michael Palin's Himalaya, Journey of a Lifetime. And this is you visiting again or revisiting a journey you made some time ago. Indeed, it's a sort of archive, you know, looking back at the archives, remembering things that happened, reading bits out of diary, script that I wrote at the time, talking about it with the, you know, the perspective of 20 or 30 years, because it's been a long time since I did those travels. Mm. And it's actually, I finally enjoyed the process, because when you're actually doing them and they go out, I'm terribly nervous about them. I'm very self-conscious. Oh, God, why was I wearing that? Oh, what a stupid thing to say. Why did you ask that question? Why is my nose so big? You, that's all you just put <laughs> in it yourself. Yeah. And then 20 years on, you just watch it and enjoy it and realise mm. you're not the central person in it anyway. It's the yeah. actual... It's the way it's shot. We had a fantastic cameraman, Nigel Meakin. They look... They still look great. So you don't have to kind of be worried about yourself, you can just enjoy the whole thing. Were there surprises in a few? Were there things that you'd forgotten that you'd seen or people you'd forgotten you'd met? Um, yeah, actually, because particularly in Himalaya, we did a, it was a you know, very long shoot up there and there were, there were one or two um, things that I'd forgotten, but most of the main standout things like meeting the Dalai Lama and all that are things that you never will, will forget. He, he knew yeah. who you were. He was a fan of Monty Python, wasn't he? Well, he was, <laughs> oh, he was a fan of me, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> no, because he did say, I want to, I would, I would travel with you. I will carry your bags. And we had a few jokes about that. Um, but he wasn't very good. He kept dropping them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, he was, he was, I think he would have loved Python because he, he had a great sense of humour. Were there moments, though, I mean, obviously now, you know, whenever someone travels, there's a lot of health and safety that goes on. I'm assuming that was the case back then. But there, there, were there moments when you, you felt like you were in danger ever or there were, you know, that accidents that could potentially have damaged you? The worst thing that happened to me was getting very bad altitude sickness. And it actually took about five days to get to the top. I had a cold... So I was, I was already, my nose was a bit blocked, and the higher you go, the less oxygen there is, everyone knows. So you get terrible headaches, and you can't sleep at night, and you feel absolutely, utterly exhausted. And we got to the very top, and there was a couple of huts right up, and beautiful mountains around, and I felt so awful, I just said, it's, it's three o'clock in the afternoon, I'm going to bed, I just feel so dreadful. And next one was, I woke up, and it was total darkness all around. And I couldn't hear anything at all. Absolute silence and darkness. I did think, this is it. This is what it must be like, you know, when you have died and gone to heaven. <laughs> and I thought about it for a minute, and I thought, oh, I should have said goodbye to a few people. <laughs> then I heard a, an amazing sort of cough from the hut next door, someone really clearing me. Throat. <laughs> Very nasty bronchial cough, and it was the best sound ever. <laughs> <laughs> I was alive. Of course, these are in the days before COVID when a cough was just a cough. Yes, cough. <laughs> yes, cough was yes, yes. quite as bad. <laughs>